The ovaries are the female gonads. They are the primary female sex organs. Their main job is to produce ova. These female sex cells are also known as eggs. Eggs produce the female sex hormones estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is the female sex hormone responsible for female puberty and the maturation of the reproductive system. And progesterone acts with estrogen to develop the breasts and jumpstart menstruation. It also maintains the right environment in the uterus for implantation and growth of a zygote. Just like males, females also have a duct system. It's made up of three structures, the uterine tubes, the uterus, and the vagina. The uterine or fallopian tubes cordially receive and conduct the ovum from the ovaries and toward the uterus. They also provide fantastic sites where fertilization takes place. The uterus is a hollow organ with thick walls. It is the site of implantation of a zygote. Remember, a zygote is formed in the fallopian tubes and housed in the uterus. That means its job is to receive, retain, and nourish a completely fertilized egg. The uterus leads into the vagina through an opening called the cervix. These layers are the parametrium, which is the outer layer, the myometrium, which is the thick muscular middle layer, and the endometrium, which is the inner layer. The endometrium is the site where embryos are implanted. Yep, that's where the zygote latches on. The superior or upper sublayer of the endometrium is called the functional layer. This is the layer that crumbles away during menstruation. Don't worry. The wall of the endometrium is eventually regenerated and replaced by an underlying sublayer called the basal layer. So we can fall off all over again and again and again. The third duct is the vagina. The vagina is a thin-walled tube that is the female copulatory organ. The vagina is also a passageway for baby delivery and menstrual flow. The female external genitalia, or vulva, is made up of the mons pubis, the labia majora, the labia minora, the vestibule, and the clitoris. The mons pubis is a fatty round area overlying the pubic bone. After puberty, it is covered with pubic hair. The labia majora are pigmented, hair-covered, outer fatty skin folds. They are located posterior to or behind the mons pubis. The mons pubis is a female answer to the scrotum. The labia minora is a thin, delicate, inner fold covered with a thin layer of mucous membrane and oil. They're completely enclosed by the labia majora. The vestibule is an inner region completely enclosed by the labia minora. This area contains the greater and lesser vestibular glands. These glands are kind of like the bulbo-urethral glands in the male reproductive system. They release mucus into the vestibule in order to lubricate it during sexual intercourse. The clitoris is the last part of the female external genitalia that we'll talk about. The clitoris is a female erectile organ that's kind of like the penis. It's the main structure that contributes to female arousal. The clitoris is a protruding structure made up of erectile tissue. It has two roots and, like the penis, it also has a shaft. The clitoris is full of sensory nerve endings, so, like the penis, the clitoris is sensitive to the touch. The breasts are also sometimes discussed with the female external genitalia. Female breasts contain a number of structures that are really important if you want to nourish a newborn baby. These structures are the mammary glands and the nipples. The mammary glands are modified sweat glands contained inside the breasts. They produce the milk that nourishes a newborn baby. The milk is produced by small glands and then carried to the nipples by a system of ducts. The nipple is the structure that ejects milk. The areola is the center section of the breast that surrounds the nipple. It contains sebaceous glands which produce oil that prevents the nipple from drying up and cracking. The areola is pigmented and darkens during pregnancy. This dark area is like a marker that helps the infants locate the milk.